Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another My 600 Pound Life video, and this was one of the ones that I think you guys wanted me to do next. Uh, the full episode things, they're kind of friggin' long, but it seems to be what you guys like, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. But I think she's one of the ones that got to the highest weight, if I'm not mistaken. And she's letting it all hang out here anyway. But she was kind of the most extreme case we're gonna see. And I, if I remember correctly, it was something to do with guys paying her to friggin' eat. Which sounds like a hell of a career choice, but let's check this out and see what she's got going on. Really able to even make it to the bathroom. Because walking is so difficult. Hey, she's lucky she can just walk at her size, because her stomach's like hitting her damn ankles. I would have thought she would have been bed bound a long time ago. She's lucky she could walk. Somewhere in me is this little glimmer of hope. I just want to be a normal person. <laughs> With a bag of Cheetos. You can't do it. And then I just get mad. If I don't make a change now, I'm scared it's going to be too late. I mean, that's kind of how it just goes. You have to change. A lot of people just go back to the way they were eating before, and that's why it's like a 5% success rate, I guess. But if you actually try to change, it's probably way higher than that. I refuse to stop fighting. I have to do this for my children. My 600 pound life do love their coochie cam. They be zooming right in, trying to tell me all of Victoria's secret. There you go. I was listening to that song this morning. Bro, where is she? I'm surprised she's even laying down like that. But you see she's propped up. She obviously can't breathe. So I don't see a CPAP or anything. I'm shocked she don't have one of those. My life is so miserable now because I've let my weight get so out of control that I'm barely functioning. And it's getting harder and worse every single day. Bro, that's a friggin' camera angle. Check that thing out. That's the fupa, the hoopa, and everything else. Damn, I could see her tonsils through that thing. That's crazy. And I know I am very close to becoming bedridden. So, at this point, I wish my life was just a nightmare that I can wait for. But I don't. Ooh. Instead, I struggle. Every time I see them take their clothes off, like pour some sugar on me starts playing in my head, but I think I'm just a psychopath. I guess if we're 800 pounds, it should be pour some stevia on me or something. I struggle to do what I need to do to survive. And it's getting harder to get out of bed. <laughs> I've done that rock before. Right now, I live by myself in a one-bedroom apartment on the second floor. But my oh, side... shit, the second floor. Do the people under you know they're in danger? I would never go on the second floor at that size. That's begging for, like, a friggin' collapse. It makes it almost impossible to do anything on my own. I'm hey, barely Yibis. able to even make it to the bathroom because walking is so difficult. What you gonna do with and all once that once I get junk? there, <laughs> I'm at the point where it's getting hard to fit through the door. Mostly because of my stomach and how far it hangs. 
at 800 plus, she's lucky she can get through the door. Because, like, you see how she's shaped. It's funny how your body works. It'll shape you in different ways. Since I've been losing weight, my freaking love handles are crazy. But she's lucky she could slide through there anyway. And by the time I try and bathe myself, I'm already exhausted and hurting with barely an ounce of energy left to clean myself. It's been a long time since I could stand in the shower. <laughs> like 12 years. It do be like that. She's sitting on the toilet. I remember getting out of the shower and sitting on the toilet to take a break because I was out of breath. But she's basically showering where she shits. That's crazy. There's no way you're getting clean. And it's getting so hard to keep clean. I've had to go from bathing every day to about every four days because I have to work so hard to do it. Yeah. Crazy to but say that. But even on days when I push myself to do it, some areas I can't even reach without using a stick or something. Better be careful where you're jamming that damn stick, lady. People will pay good money to see that. I have to reach and poke and prod at myself, so it's just, it's so hard. Ooh, get up in there. And I hate that I've let myself get to this point where I'm struggling just to keep clean. One of these days, with all the pain and how exhausted I feel, I'm not going to be able to do it anymore. <sighs> Honestly, I'm shocked she still can. Like, it was tough for me at 6.05. 800 plus? I don't know how she's managing. She's a pretty tough broad to be keep it real. If I fall in that little tiny bathroom, I'm just gonna stay there oh yeah, for God knows over. how long without a phone to call for help. Where's she? Oh, glasses. And I just hate it. I hate how hard it is for me to be in this body. And I'm constantly miserable. I didn't see her scrub her ass at all. So that thing's got to be friggin' rancid. I bet that bed could gag a maggot. Like, that's crazy. So all I want to do is find ways to forget about my life. So I eat because food lets me do that. And that's mostly what I do all day, is eat. I have food delivery set up on a schedule starting okay. in the morning. Uber Eats made it really easy to be super fat. It comes right to your friggin' door. She ain't gotta go nowhere. If she had to get up and get it, she'd weigh like probably a hundred or so pounds less. But she'd still be up there. But she'd at least have to put in some friggin' effort. You know what I mean? I have to have it brought to me. Because walking up and down stairs... I'm too weak to do that now. And I'm scared to admit that just walking across the apartment to get the food is almost more than I can handle. Butt cracks and bacon, but baby. instead of thinking about that, I just think about the food I'm about to eat and how full it's about to make me. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Oh, okay. Have a nice day. You too. Because more than anything else... Bro, remind me, she said she lives alone, right? She's keeping Ronald McDonald in friggin' business. That's a lot of food. Else, it's the feeling of being full that I love. <sighs> food is just so good to me. Food can... Fill me up and make me feel the most comfort that I've ever felt. Yeah, that's what she said. But that's a lot of friggin' burritos, guys. I didn't even know McDonald's made friggin' cookies. This chick's got all the menu hacks. We need to hit her up, figure out what's up. It makes me feel like I'm at home. And that I'm safe. As long as I'm full and happy. 
because food is a hug from the inside. And no matter how much I eat, it's never enough. And there are days where I ask myself how I ended up here. And I know it's because food has always been the most important thing in my life. This chick would have killed with a mukbang cha channel on friggin' YouTube. Why is she doing- Look, she's got the light. Oh, I rem- Yeah, she pays- Okay, she eats so guys can slap their salami. I remember. But she ain't filming herself right now. This is lost revenue, lady. What the hell's wrong with you? Food has been the greatest source of comfort in my life as far back as I can remember. And because of that, I cannot remember a time in my life where I was not overweight. Same. But I remember my weight gain really started when I was five or six, about the time my parents were divorced. Same, I have four same. siblings, a younger sister who is my real sister. The rest of my siblings are half. And the divorce was very hard for everybody. But my mom needed to get away from my dad because my dad was a violent drunk. He was a wonderful guy. There's always some kind of trauma tied into this. I don't know. I never really psychoanalyze myself. I just think I like freaking food. But usually, like, you hear some kind of story like this. Sober. And even though he never laid a hand on me or my younger sister, he would get drunk and he was horrific to my mother and to my older brother and sister. And I remember when things would start to get crazy, I would eat something and it would calm me down. And I was already around 150 pounds when I was seven. After the divorce, things didn't get any easier because me and my little sister started out going with my mom. Okay, so she's just always had an unhealthy relationship with food. I just think more or less, I didn't understand. Like I was given the options as a kid. I wasn't told like, this is what you have to eat. And I think that kind of screwed me up. But she had a lot of trouble taking care of us on her own. So she decided to go to nursing school to make more money but she couldn't do that and take care of us, so she needed us to be with dad. Samantha's father was an alcoholic. I never would have chosen for Samantha to stay with him, but your choices are really limited sometimes, and I couldn't provide. So needed him to take them for that year, and she moved back with her father. Yeah, but I'm confused. Like, you know the man's an alcoholic. He's a violent drunk. Why would you send her back there? It seems like the mother's making a terrible choice, so I could see how this all spiraled for her. Living with my dad was turbulent. He had gotten remarried and had a new stepdaughter, too. So it was a hard dynamic being in that house, and food was my only escape from that but they would not allow me to eat what I wanted. So I was hungry all the time. It was awful. And the only break I had was on the weekends when I got to go be with my mom. My parents put a padlock on the fridge. I found that key in under 24 hours fat, like flat. You weren't keeping this fat boy away from his freaking pizzas. I love spending every other weekend with my mom and I wished that it was so much more. When Samantha lived with me, there was no restrictions. Whatever she wanted to have, she had. Her stepmother and her dad did, at some points, try to restrict that. And she really did not respond very well to that. I mean, the restriction doesn't seem like the problem. I, I can't tell yet if it's the dad or the mom that was just letting her go wild. But right now, it sounds like the dad was a drunk, but he was trying to restrict her intake. So, I'm not sure which one was worse yet. When I was 10 years old, I hit 200 pounds. And they tried to limit my food even more. But all that did was made me angrier. I didn't want to be told what to eat. And I was more determined to eat what I wanted because that's what made me feel like I was okay. And so my weight gain never slowed. And I hit 300 pounds, but by the time I was 12, I mean, I think 
I dropped was like 230, 240 at 12, so she was putting it on quicker than me, but her relationship with food is just all kinds of effed up, so. That was when my weight really started to bother me. Seventh and eighth grade were just a nightmare. And I was just miserable in going to school. I didn't have real friends. And the only thing that I could turn to to find any source of peace or happiness was food. At the same time, I was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger I got, the harder things got. So it was like this negative cycle oh, that got worse when I got into high school. Because I got up to about 400 pounds before I dropped out of school when I was seven. I was probably 400 pounds in school. I just, I don't know. Our scale went to like 350 and I had just played the ignorance is bliss card. But also, I think middle school is the worst years of your life, no matter what. Nobody's comfortable in their own skin in middle school. I think if we want to torture people, just and we learn like how to do time travel, send them back to middle school. Make them do it over. It's torment. It's terrible. So then when I was 17, I got pregnant with my first boyfriend. Damn. I cared about him a lot, so I just went with it. We moved in together. And all I did was eat for the next nine months. And when Bella was born, I was close to 500 pounds. Damn, she found her a honey bun humper and let him glaze her friggin' donut. That's crazy. 17, I mean, everybody's doing it at 17 usually, but pregnant, you didn't have a rubber or nothing? Damn. When I got to hold her, and the first thing I thought in my head was, I'm going to mess this baby up, and she's probably going to be just as big as me because I don't know how to do anything. But I didn't have time to think about that for too long, because two weeks after Bella was born, her dad and I broke up. It was not healthy at all. It was very t Did you break up because you lost weight when you had the baby? Because I think this guy was into big girls. And if you have a baby and drop, let's say, 50 pounds or so, I don't know what women drop, but... That could be a reason to break up. Toxic. So I left him, and I didn't look back. I was an 18-year-old mom, over 500 pounds, and you I was kid. terrified. But my mom started to help me out when I needed it. But when I was 20, I suffered a devastating blow. Because my father was killed in a motorcycle accident. Damn, she's just getting dealt a bad hand all the way around. It's crazy to see what some people could deal with. So, you have to deal with your mental issues before you can deal with your physical ones. Your mind's gonna, gonna be reflected in your body, so she's just suffering, I guess. And it's Poor still lady. something I haven't gotten over to this day. <laughs> Because in his final years, my dad and I had grown really close. And he came to me before he died and said, I am so sorry for being drunk and violent and mean. That's where we bonded. So after my dad passed away, I was so depressed that I could barely take care of myself. So Bella went to go live with my mom and I used food to cope. You know, the way she's talking about food, though, she's like the highest risk I think I've ever seen for becoming like clinically depressed after the surgery. Because so many people depend on food like this, and after the surgery, you don't have it anymore. And people get like seriously friggin' depressed. That's why they made me go see a therapist and stuff. They make everyone do it, I think. So, over the next few years, I gained a lot. And my weight hit over 600 pounds by the time I was 23 or 24. Damn. And I knew I couldn't keep going like that because it was getting too hard to move around. So I decided to move back home and I got Bella back from my mom and got a job in social services. Better be careful where you drip that milkshake. Guys pay good money for that too. I didn't know you could buy a friggin' box of cookies from McDonald's though. I knew they had them, but a whole box? And I hated the job, but it paid the bills. And for a little while, it looked like I was going to start turning my life around. But I never stopped eating, and my weight kept creeping up and up. And eventually, I lost my job because of my size. So I tried to get another job, but I was so big that no one would hire me. And I just gave up. 
Yeah, unfortunately, most places will look at you as a health risk or like a liability because they're going to have to pay your workers' comp or whatever when you can't keep going, life insurance, all that. It's all going to fall on them. So, yeah, a lot of places won't hire you at that size. And I went to this deep spiral where I just kept eating and gaining and eating and gaining. Over the next three years, I gained up to 800 pounds. And I got to where I was bed bound. And I was so depressed, I couldn't even take it. After I got out of the mental hospital in Denver, in order. Bruh, how many times we got to see this lady's moose knuckle? Like, they, they do them dirty on my 600 pound life, just zooming in on the crotch. In order to make money, since finding a job was out of the question at my size, I chose to start fetish modeling for a website that catered to people who liked large women. Bruh. How much money are we talking here? Because I'm still fat and I could show you some crazy stuff with a popsicle. I could go, how much money? So I have a setup in my apartment where I can film myself eating. And I eat for people. I just eat what I want and they pay for it as long as I film it. So that's how I make a living and keep going. And it makes me feel appreciated. So I'm happy to do it. Uh, back with the stomach table. When your stomach becomes your table, you've got a friggin' issue. Hi. Long time no see, everybody. People ask me all the time, when is gonna be that cake video? How do we get hair forks? That's crazy. You get so overweight, you keep utensils in your hair? Wow. Well, it's right now. Thank you for requesting this. It's making me bigger and bigger. I can just feel it. My mom's self-image really improved after she- Really? That's what the guys want to hear? You got the carrot cake coomers wanting to hear I'm getting bigger and bigger. That's so sick. I don't like the kink shame people, but if I'm getting off to the thought of you putting about 10 pounds on or something today, that's just weird. She started that modeling job kind of makes her happier because those people just find her as beautiful. They find her as a human being, not some huge maniac. We've come to the saddest part of this situation and it's the end of this cake. How the hell did she finish it? Writing is such sweet sorrow. See you later. Thank you. I would have thought she at least had to do more than that. Like I can eat a carrot cake and rub my nipples or something. Somebody want to pay me? I could do. I, I'm missing all kinds of opportunities here. But there's no question that this job has been unhealthy for me because I found the perfect community to reinforce my worst habits. I last weighed in six months ago, legitimately, and I was at 811 pounds. Damn. And it's gonna be rock bottom for me if Bella ends up having to help me. Beautiful. Samantha's lifestyle, it's such a trial for Isabella. It's been one bad decision after another. Bruh, I bet those Chinese restaurants got her on speed dial. I'd be calling her every day if she ordered that much food, because Chinese food ain't cheap. She's probably dropping a good $100 bill, or at least some man is that wants to get off to her sloop, slurping a noodle. Think about it being his noodle, I guess. And I finally realized about three years ago, once somebody's not motivated to help themselves, you can knock yourself out trying to help them, but you're not gonna get anywhere with it. So, I can't do it sure. anymore. I'm through. So I've called Dr. Now because he's one of the only people that I know of that might help me. And he said he will. And he gave me an appointment that's supposed to be in a couple weeks in his office. But I have to figure out how to get to Houston to see him. You're gonna have to get a damn helicopter to carry all that. I don't think she's gonna she's gonna ruin the suspension on a car. But what's your favorite thing at a Chinese place? Crab rangoons are mine for sure. I can't fit into any vehicle except a bariatric ambulance. And there's not any that can get me from Denver to Houston. And I'm terrified because I don't know what to do. Because I'm almost out of time. And I don't wanna die. Look. 
we're missing a golden opportunity here. What you do is you get on that website and say, I will eat a whole cheesecake if you give me a ride from here to here. And then guys will be coming out of the friggin' woodwork. They'll be like, well, uh, if you put an Oscar Mayer wiener in your belly button, I'm there. Like, it'll go crazy. She's so sad. I hate food now, I just hate it. <laughs> but I'm gigantic. It just says in my house. Yeah, because everything you're doing is self destructive. Then you're sitting here saying, Why me? Why me? You just pounded a whole damn carrot cake. You can't cry about how big you are now. Bodies don't want to be 800 pounds. Most bodies die. They just suffer every minute. Everything is uncomfortable all the time. That's what happens when you put 900 pounds on your ankles. It ain't gonna feel good. I hurt like hell, so I know she hurts like hell. If I don't change, I know I'm gonna die. I know any day now could be it for me. My body will just break from it all. So I know I have to figure something out. Because Bruh, that Also, how is that toilet holding her up? I didn't realize that before. But I was always shocked that I didn't break the toilet. How is she managing? Also, that's kind of hard as a guy because the toilet seat will get like a Darth Vader grip on your nuts when you sit on it. You gotta be freaking careful. What happens? It's too late. <laughs> whole damn carrot cake. That shit ain't gonna sit that well. I didn't get a fat guy roller coaster. This is bull. I keep realizing all these ways I got screwed. I didn't get to do any of this fun stuff. All right, keep that tight. Mm -hmm. I had those after surgery. Okay. All right, so just like that. gonna go behind you. It's all right. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm actually truly impressed that she can stand up at her size. Because people way smaller can't. Great. Right. You guys good? Yeah, so, I'm going to just try to go and lean on things. Okay. Do my thing. What was that? Don't move me too hard. But... Bro, you three behind her are some brave souls. Because she comes tumbling backwards, you're all friggin' done for. No shot would I be on back duty here. One, two, three. There we go. Good. No. Also, with her straining like that, what if she friggin' backfires in your face? You're definitely getting friggin' pink eye. Thank you so much, man. I'm up. The hard part is done. Oh, bitch. Take that off 
Yeah. Right behind you here. God's act. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bro, also, I need to know who made that couch ASAP. Because the way she's flopping down on that thing and it's still holding her up, that's great A craftsmanship for sure. Hey, is there anything else we can do for you? I think that's it. Right. Take a Thanks. cheesecake. Nice to see you again. Good luck to you. Yeah, take care, okay? That was a scary few days for me. I thought my body was starting to break down. But I'm glad to be back home and that my daughter Bella is here with me for a few days to make sure that I'm okay. Do me. Now I'm just hoping that everything can go back to normal for a bit. Except for the fact that I still have kidney stones, I guess. So I realize now, even more, that I'm running out of time. And I need to get to Houston to see Dr. Now before it's too- Her poor daughter looks pretty young to be taking care of her mother, too. There's probably a bunch of things she wants to do with her own life but her mom's sitting there just needing her like every minute, but she seems like she does more than a lot of people did on the show. Too late. 799 pounds on 15 ounces. Wait, what? And I'm still six foot two, I, I haven't shrank or grown. Did you see me get up the stairs? I don't know how you do it, honestly. One Where's her step hair fork? at a time. Every step feels like I gain at least 20 or 30 pounds, but it's just, Everybody around me doesn't know what to do. I think they just got their fingers crossed. I'm miserable with how I am now. This is a miserable life, and I want to stop feeling like a burden to people I care about, especially Bella. That's probably the most common thing in people to get that size because you need help with a lot of things you do. I know I felt pretty scummy about myself, but yeah, I'm sure she feels terrible. I hate that I made her worry about me again like this. It just makes me feel like I'm constantly failing her. And what I want to change that. Are you giving this lady friggin' like, what is that? Strawberry, is that some kind of V8 splash? That shit's loaded with sugar. She don't need that. We're trying to lose weight for this diet plan, not give her sugar bombs. Fupa go crazy. I think I'm at rock bottom right now. The past couple of weeks have been really depressing for me because I'm still struggling to find a way to Houston. Doctor Now is worried about me traveling on my own without some sort of medical transport. Oh yeah, she definitely needs medical transport, but I'm kind of like curious to see how she manages to get on that toilet seat. It's a lot easier for a woman, but a guy, as I said before, it's going to be choking your wiener off. I, I don't know, I kind of want to see it. But there aren't any services like that here in Denver That's that weird. are either willing or able to take me all the way to Houston because I'm so big. And you know, I'm struggling with being really discouraged at this point because it just all feels hopeless. Bro, that's but my mom and sister are coming shit. over to try and cheer me up. And it makes me worry a little about what they're gonna think when they see how big I've gotten. But I'm allowing their visit because I know being alone right now is just not helping. Come in. Hi. 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 I haven't seen you guys what in you forever. Doing? Now we're I'm just hanging out. So how are you? Uh, good. I feel like when somebody asks you at that size what you're doing, the answer is always sitting. I'm sitting. That's what I'm always freaking doing, sitting. What else am I going to do? Right. I was nervous for you guys to come here today just because I'm so large. What were you worrying about? Just, That's what she said. I've been inside for 12 years, <laughs> and I've gained 250 pounds since I saw you guys last. Has it been 12 years? About, yeah. Is I, this the biggest that you've been? The biggest that I've been. And it's, uh, it's bad. It's bad now. And then Bella, I think she worries about me all the time, but she just doesn't show it. And then that's not fair to her. I have been sad for a long time about what your life has been. 
but you were so adverse to doing anything about it. I think that it's absolutely... Yeah, because once you get to a certain size, it feels like there's no point. Like, it just feels like so much of a struggle. I know, I was there. You feel like you're a lost cause, almost. You never are, but that's how you feel. It just feels like too much to overcome. Absolutely wonderful that you are ready to get help. It's time that you got help. There's nothing else to do now. I just want you to be able to have a normal life and, you know, be happy. And I want to work with straight. animals. I want to bring home litters That's of kittens. That's what you've always wanted to do. <laughs> animals! I just want to be around them. I told Bella, you're going to be a vet or a vet tech, and we're going to all work at the same vet. And can you even imagine me and Bella? We would be a dream team. I like, know. Would Wouldn't you, that? Just... you guys would. You guys would be amazing. I don't think that I can do this by myself. And so I appreciate you guys coming. And I don't know why I'm worried. And I'm ashamed, and I don't want to worry people. I just. It's too late for us not to worry. So. Yeah. But this was nice seeing you guys. Yeah, people are always going to worry about you at that size. But also, if you're like friggin' 800 pounds and you want to work with animals, I would think that would be pretty dangerous. What if she, like, accidentally stepped on a chihuahua? That sucker's got no shot. No shot at all. Well, so. then, then next time you see us, you won't have to be worried. There you go. And I'm going to show up for Thanksgiving in a car that I drove there myself. That's a wonderful goal. <laughs> <laughs> and nice to see you. <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. I love you, Sam. I love you, too, Tracy. It's wonderful to see you. <sighs> Thanks for coming. Okay, bye. Bye, bye guys. You, Sam. <laughs> love you. Now be safe. Part of me was hoping that my mom and sister would offer to help me. I'm Time for Grubhub, baby. They're out the door. I'm thankful they came to support me. But I'm not feeling a whole lot better because I know I'm running out of time. I'm still in Colorado and I've been feeling really sick for the past week and my stomach pain has come back. So Bella's come back to look after me and help me. But this morning I started having chest pains too and it's getting worse. And my Bro, she should definitely have somebody living there with her at her size. At least have a damn life alert lady. So you, or some kind of friggin' fall corn or something to warn the people downstairs. You're a danger whole body is. I'm swelling up and losing control of my bladder. So that's all scaring me, and I'm really worried what that means. But I know it probably can't be good. What's going on? What hurts? Chest is tight. It hurts so bad. Like my, my shoulder blades hurt. Like up here hurts. At least I'm sitting on it. I don't know what's going on with me. Probably shouldn't have had the 10 breakfast burritos of four eggs, sausage McMuffins, whatever, for breakfast. That might be what's going on with your heart. It's cutting off the circulation of my leg. And I also peed my bed twice last night. So oh, the water no. I walk. This chick's friggin' R. Kelly's wet dream. That's why I'm on this towel. I, I don't even feel good enough to, to like, take my sheets off my bed. It's disgusting. Like, I literally just cannot move around and do anything. And I'm, I'm afraid something's happening with my heart. And I'm scared. I'm scared it's congestive heart failure. So, I'm gonna call the ambulance. Actually, I told them that you need a bariatric hospital. Hmm. No. Uh, you surprised them with that last second, because that's just gonna be funny when they show up with a little friggin' thing to take you out. Man, I would do something like that, but I live to troll people. I wish I was on this TV show just so I could put a, put a bunch of pies in the corner and, like, mush them up and tell them I was so addicted to food that I was going diddling pies in my spare time. I would forever be known as the pie pounder the rest of my life, and I'd be okay with that. I don't know if I should call non emergency or just the regular 911. What if someone's actually dying and my fat ass is just here just being the fat? I'm calling Drain on resources. Sorry, she really has no self worth in herself at all. What's uh, I just I'm retaining water really bad. My chest just feels hurt, like it hurts. And my foot's messed up. 
but I weigh like 800 pounds, so, and I've got stairs to get down, so I just, in, until it gets, I don't want it to get worse and then not be able to get out of here. You guys think we could build a slide for like 800 pound people where they gotta get down a floor? They just like jump on the slide? Hmm. Could work. It's kind of, maybe that's like an assembly line. Maybe they have one of those they do with like cow carcasses or something. Hmm. Okay, and you said you're upstairs? Uh, about, about seven steps, yeah. Okay, um, is anything else bothering you other than just retaining water? Uh, yeah, I wet the bed last night twice. My chest feels heavy. There's a big giant crack in my heel and I can barely walk. But it's like my shoulder blades hurt in the front. Like the top, like right under my collarbones just feel really heavy. Okay, are you having any problems breathing? Sometimes, I mean, no. No, lady, I breathe like a friggin' Olympian. What do you think? She's carrying 500 pounds of stomach on her. She's definitely struggling. If I just stand up, I can barely breathe. I, I am really large, but it's usually not that bad. Okay, just, do a puff on the way, okay? All right, thanks. Okay. It's scary to watch her spiral. Times like this, everything went south really fast. And I'm trying to be positive, but how are you supposed to keep that positivity when someone has a very negative mindset instead of constantly thinking she's gonna die? You're just... Yeah, I feel like I've heard nothing but negativity from her. Not a single positive. She seems like a very negative person. I try to be positive, even though I could just sit here and cry about how bad it all was all the time, but I'd rather sit here and joke around, to be honest. You expect the worst. Come on in, boys, and bring the big hose. Feeling sick after the bed just be. Okay. Another roller coaster ride? I'm very scared about my body and what's going on. Bro, I would pay good money to see any of these guys try to fire me and carry her down the steps. Oh man, that would be so funny. I feel like I'm swelling up everywhere and the pain is getting so intense, it's unbearable. And I'm worried about the strain of having to move is just gonna make it worse. And my foot is so swollen, it's bleeding now. So I don't even know how yeah. this is even gonna work. With the foot swelling, my ankle, like, it used to swell so much, it would fold over and touch the top of my foot. It hurt so bad. Hi, Samantha. Mm -hmm. How you doing today, girl? Not good. Okay. Let's get this wrapped around you so we can help you get up. You wanna lift your arms? We'll put this around you. All right. So, on your count, when you're ready to stand, Take a couple good breaths through Gotta yours. remember, she's covered in pee also, so she probably weighs like three pounds extra because you're gonna absorb some of that water. So, this is gonna be a little tougher, boys. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm gonna stand, okay? And we're just gonna, gonna make up, a beeline okay? for that door. I need to... There we go. <laughs> Sneak a peek, fellas. <laughs> I got you, we got you, don't worry. We got you, okay, let's start go making. Down. Let's go that. No! <laughs> Hey, hey, I know it hurts. I know it hurts, but we need to focus. Don't lean back, okay? Come you're, on. Gonna, you're gonna walk with me. We're good, we're good. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right. I'm gonna take this out from under you. <laughs> They're gonna keep moving fast. There you go. Go. Keep going, keep going right. a little further. Stay with me all the way. Could you just think for a second right now, okay? You see her, but there's guys that are willing to pay money and polish their pickle thinking about how much weight she's gained. That's friggin' sick. They just want to sit there and watch. I had a chick message me wanting to feed me cookies till I die. Another chick messaged me wanting to peg me. We ain't going that way. And what was it? There was another funny one, too. I can't even think of at the moment. I don't know. Probably somebody wanted me to dress up in a tutu and do something. If you need me, I'm right here in front of you, okay? Get there. 
Alright, with your right arm so there, but let it go. Alright, need more slack. Alright, we're gonna just lift up. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. Okay, you got us a little step. Out. Good. Let's go to your right. You're doing good. How you feeling? Lift up. Alright. Alright, so tell us if we're lifting too much. No, no. Railing right there first? Yeah. Alright, let's rest right here. Rest along here. Am I wrong for it while she's walking down the hall thinking fee, fo, fi, fum? I, I'm a sicko, man. I, something's wrong with me. Uh, uh, Face can't down, get ass step. up. There's no way to get on the f step. We got it. I'm she not like, yelling at anybody. I'm still I'm dying. No, no, I know. Trust me. We're there with you. We won't let you. We're not going to let you fall, okay? Oh my god, her You're lips are blue. You all the way down, okay? Let's get you comfortable, okay? It was like the you think that's from oxygen or did she just eat something blue raspberry? Mm. Come on. You got this. You're strong enough. You got this. Step down right in front of you. God, buddy, you're insane. Let's do it. Focus on me. Come on. Focus on me. Which leg's coming first? There we go. Good. One more step. Another step. One more step. Come on. All it's gonna take is her knee to give out and Buddy in front of her, done so. He's a brave man. He needs a medal. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Come on. You're doing great. One more. Come on. One at a time. One more. Go. You guys behind me have to get me. I'm losing my strength. Keep going. We got you. Yep. Let's got go. You. Go. Good job. Let's keep go. moving. Keep moving. Get you a handful, keep son. Going. Keep going. Two more steps. Come on. Keep going. One more step. One more step. One more step. All right. Good job. I know. Come on. Let's go. These are scary. That's all right. That's all right. We got you. We got you. Come on. All right. I want you to like sit here and think about it for a second. But this is where I was heading in five, ten years if I didn't change my ways. I 100% would have been in the same shoes. I joke a lot, but it's sad to see somebody that let themselves that far go. Good job. Ooh. We're going to do one at a time, one leg at a time. Okay. Good job. One, two, three. There we go. Want to push your head up a little bit? There we go. This was excruciating. That was just a horrible experience. I'm glad it's done now, and I'm gonna go to the hospital. I'm just really hoping that I can make it. I thought she was gone for a second. You see that baby start to list? I thought she was goner. Because I'm getting worse by the second. I've never been in this much pain, and it's really scaring me and that my body's gonna give out now. I love you. Everything's good. You don't have to take care of me now. I love you. Because I want to make it, and I want to be there for Bella. Isn't Bella the name of the girl from Twilight? I don't know why that just popped into my head. The past 24 hours have been miserable because they've just been running tests on me nonstop to try to figure out what's wrong with me. They did ultrasounds, they did x-rays, they did everything but CAT scan because I don't fit in. I could tell you what's wrong with you. You got a carrot cake-itis. In their CAT scan machine. But so far they haven't figured anything out. So they're still doing tests. But nobody even really knows what's causing my chest pains or trouble breathing and all the swelling in my body that's making me constantly ache. So I'm really scared about what's wrong and what's gonna happen to me. Soaking wet. Dr. Sean prescribes you tender cardio. Go to Pound Town, baby. Get your stinky twinkie on and see how many guys can knock some pounds off that thing. Oh my gosh. And then to top it all off, I wet my bed and it's embarrassing wetting the bed, especially at my age, but because I'm so large, I just can't get up fast enough and just pee on myself. And it's just not clean and I can't clean myself well enough. Why don't they have her cathetered? I would think there's no shot she's making it to the bathroom, so 
I had a nurse put a cat. I only had a catheter once. And this nurse came in and was like, is it okay if she practices on you? I was like, sure, the more the merrier. I'm a nice guy, right? This woman proceeded to do the slowest catheter to me. I called her so many names and then I had to apologize. Can you help me change my sheets and my pillows so I don't have to sit in my own filth any longer? Okay. So I am gonna have you lift your legs up. Oh, sorry. No, nope, you're just fine. You're just great. I knew she could do tender cardio. Look at this. She's ready to go. Assume the position. Damn. She's more flexible than I'd think for a 900 pounder. been able to do in here. I'm saying, buddy, she got them ankles up there. She could grab them things. She could give you the best five minutes of your life, buddy. If we can get those lower rails up, I can use them as, as yeah. grips yeah. to pull forward. I don't know how easy it's going to be if, if I'm up this far, but okay. oh, you have control down there, too. That's what I used to tell girls all the time. I'll give you the best five minutes of your life. Just such a smart ass. Okay. I'm going to go... One, two, oh, oh. Good job. I'm gonna have to. Good job. Okay. You're doing some good. Thank God my bed is dry. But that's just one issue among many, many other things that I need fixed right now for me to be right. I mean, you're gonna have to pee again. You need a catheter. Why'd they just leave? Huh? I need. And I really hope my heart and my lungs aren't failing. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to go down and see Dr. Now to prove to him that I'm ready to make the changes in my life in order to get his help and weight loss surgery. I guess that all depends on how long I'm going to be in the hospital. Hopefully soon still, because I know I already missed my first appointment with him a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, Mason? Is she ordering room service? You better not be. But you think about it, she's not got any money coming in. She could have filmed herself eating some hospital food, maybe. I don't think anybody's going to get off to that, but maybe. That's right. I would like um, the chicken Caesar salad with. I was breast, joking. I didn't think she was actually ordering room service. What the hell is going on? I didn't know that was possible. I have grilled and ranch dressing with that. And then a bowl of grapes, um, a bowl of cottage cheese, Pepsi, chocolate milk, and carrot cake. Oh my god, this woman's it. got a carrot cake addiction. Again? Nobody's even paying to see this long-awaited cake video. Thank you. I still desperately need weight loss surgery. Because I know I have to change before it gets worse. And food is still everything to me. So I need to talk to Doctor now and set a call with him to let him know what's going on and that I'm still coming to him as soon as possible. I just know I'm running out of time, and he's still my only hope to change my habits before it's too late. Right, when my kidneys shut down on me and I had to go to the hospital, they had to switch beds for me because the bed was too narrow. I had to get into the fat boy bed, and she, I don't know, I didn't. I think her bed's probably about the same size. I didn't fill it out quite as much as her, but it's just crazy to think that we were in like the same size bed. I've been in the hospital for around six weeks now. After they ran all their tests and everything, the good news was my body wasn't breaking down or anything that I was afraid of at that time. But I still have so many health issues related to my weight, so they haven't felt like it's been safe to send me home. No, your body's definitely breaking down, and I wouldn't want them to send you home either. 
Them firefighters would have to risk their life to get you down that flight of stairs or up it again. Doctor now wants them to put me on a controlled diet here, but it turns out they don't really do that. Or at least not how Dr. Now ah. wants. He's been checking in on me and some of my treatments. And I have a video call with him today. I do have some calorie restrictions here trying to help me. But I haven't lost any weight. Because if for some reason I can't get what I want here, I can just... Because you're ordering effing room service or calling and ordering food. It's no shock why you're not losing weight. Order it to be delivered. I just order food online and then somebody delivers it to me. But I'm so excited when it's coming because I feel the happiest when I know I've got food around. What? Hey, Sam. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? I'm all right. Oh, man. Please have a large pizza come through the door right now because I would love for somebody to see that. You got a 900-pound woman ordering pizza and you guys aren't stopping them? I'm just going to get away on you. Does this have to be off? No. You are one big ass lady. All right, looks like 9.40 this morning. Okay. That's not good news. Damn. I mean, At this point, why not just go for a thousand? You know, sometimes I think about that to myself. I was 605. Why didn't I just go for a thousand so I could have made this weight loss look way better? But I'm a sicko. I don't know. Thing I can do for you right now? Nope. Okay. That's it. See you soon. Thanks, Allison. You're welcome. Hey there. How many damn this things This is the most front? helpless I've ever felt in my whole life. Because I'm getting worse. Bro, doctor now says a restricted diet. You say, here's half a watermelon. How is this helping? She's 940. I initially came in here walking with my own muscles, standing with my own. But I stayed in the bed too long, and I just lost my strength. And so from then on out, like, I cannot even stand up without my oh walker. Oh, my God. So it's pretty sad. This lady's eating better than me. It's time for my call with Dr. Now to update him on things. And I don't think he's going to be happy to find out where my weight is now. So this sure should be fun. It? Oh, yes. In comes the fat boy Grim Reaper. I love Dr. Now, man. I like people that are blunt and just tell it like it is. That's kind of how I am. Thanks, Amanda. Hi. How you doing? Uh, I've seen better days, but I'm doing okay, <laughs> relatively. So I see that you're still in the hospital, huh? Yep, because I've developed some new health issues. Like, uh, what issues? Um, skin has been a big problem right now. I developed 940 pounds of issues. What do you mean, what issues? She's probably got everything. My right side is bigger. It's so full of fluid that the pores, I don't really have wounds over there. The pores are, themselves are just weeping uh, fluid. Yeah. They just put chucks under me and let me just weep all over it. I had that happen. My legs were swollen, and I would, like, poke holes because you feel like you got to get the pressure out. And then it soaked my pants for, like, three days. It just leaked liquid. It's called weeping or whatever. My pores weren't doing it. I was poking holes to do it. But I'm a psychopath. I shouldn't have done that. Well, that all sounds pretty bad. So your health is still deteriorating rapidly, and being in that bed all the time is not helping that. What is your mobility? I can still stand, I can still walk, but I have to use a walker. Okay, so what is your weight now? As of this morning, it was 940. Damn. So This lady weighs as much as a Kia Rio. My grandma drives one of those. I think I've said that before. Well, in a month and a half, you put on almost another 150 pounds? Yeah. In the hospital. So you realize that your weight is getting to a very dangerous point right now, and you're running out of time. I know. So why? You know what? I bet she's able to afford to do that, because the guys on those fetish sites are like, oh yeah, she's close to the end, we're actually going to kill her. And they're sending in more money while they're probably sitting there with a bottle of lotion like, I ordered her a whole pizza today, buddy. We're going to do it. 
he getting more weight while you're in the hospital? Well, I'm not, I wasn't really following any kind of a diet plan. No, I mean, that's my problem. And um, I have to be completely frank with you. I'm sneaking food around. So when somebody Shock. tells me this is what you have to eat, I go into panic mode and feel like I have to get all the food in the world around me because I'm going to starve to death without it. I'm wondering where she's hiding a Twix bar or a Snickers or something. She's definitely got something stuck in her prison pocket. But then you got to realize she's also peeing the bed. So she's got some pee-covered Snickers that she's planning to eat later. That's crazy. You know, sometimes to do the math, you probably eat in the food that belonged for next four years ahead of time. What do you mean you're going to store? <laughs> okay. So you're next right. four years, if you don't eat anything, you got to come even. You follow that? <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> Hey, and that's, that's what exactly happened, so... Don't alarm that you're going to starve or you have to keep the food around yourself. Man, Dr. Now's a savage. Like, we don't need you to eat for four years. You've stored enough. I love that old man. But if you do it, you're in the hospital. What are you going to do when you go home? Are you going to eat all day? Uh, when I go home, I'm not going to allow anything like cupcakes or, you know, bakery cakes. None of that. Yeah, I'm not right. going to be going home with any of that. I'm You're going to go right back to work and some guy's going to say, I, I want to see you chug a chur churro right now. And he's going to get off to that. Like, what are you going to do for money? That's your job now. Your job is to be 940 pounds. You painted yourself into a terrible corner. Never let some guy's fetish overpower what you should do to better your life. Coming up with these meals, stuff that's Chicken and uh, broccoli. I'm very serious about this. I cannot put my daughter in the dead parent club like I was at 20. She's 18 now. She has to have me. <laughs> Her dad sucks, and I have to be the one that's there. And if I die, she's alone, and I can't do that to her. If her dad sucks, why'd you let him shoot up the club? I never get this, man. Some people, everyone will have kids with somebody and they'll be like, I hate them. So you didn't hate them in the moment. So maybe you should have thought about that before you laid down with them. She has to have me. We all, we're, we're best friends. Like, she's my best friend and she can't, let, I can't die. She'll be too sad. Well, oh, I, I have emailed you the diet plan. And talk to the hospital. And by putting restrictions on your food to help you do that. But so far, that hasn't worked. Yeah, so they just recently put me on a 2100 calorie a day diet. So 700 calories a meal, and then, um... Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you average to eat. I'm on 1500 calories a day right now, but after the surgery, I did like 800, and then 1,000, 1,200, and I just worked my way up to 15. You eat a little more day by day as time goes by. I'm almost two years out. That other diet plan you need to be on. But even if you're eating 2,100 calories, you would have lost a lot of weight. But you're still eating around 10 to 12,000 calories a day Good on Lord. top of being on bed rest. So this is a bad situation. 12,000 calories? I think you could just about order one of everything at McDonald's for that. She's going to town. Well, you're just going to gain more weight. And get more weight. You won't be able to get up and walk. You're almost hitting the around 1,000 pounds, huh? Mm. Yeah. It's impressive. You can still stand up at almost 1,000 pounds. But being better than at your weight, there'll be no way you can survive long. And it sounds like your body is already given out. So this is a very bad situation, Sam. I know. You say that, but you... Yeah, it's absolute death sense to be bedridden at that size. I was terrified I was heading there. But thank God, I, I never got that bad, but I was pretty close, man. I could barely get to the mailbox, the bathroom, all that. Like, it was crazy. You're still eating whatever you want. And as much as you want. And pretty soon you're going to hit 1,000 pounds, huh? I hope not. <laughs> I, I uh, Every pound that I hear that is added, I, I just... I'm pretty, I'm a realist, and I just assume that 
if I keep going, I mean, I'm gonna, my heart's gonna stop and it's not gonna come back. Something's gonna happen if I don't fix it. All right. So we're planning to have to get healthier so you can travel and come and see us. What is the plan? What is the plan? See, what she was planning to do was getting a couple of friggin' huskies, renting a sled, and then going all sled dog's journey on the thing. And that would do, be exercise, and she would get there. Yes. I don't think I have one. I've been, um... Okay. We've been working to find transport options for you, but the problem is being your size. And now you're even bigger. So right now, there is no options for you to be able to travel anywhere. Um, well, I... How do we feel about a blimp? Do we think we could do it by blimp? Because I think that might work. If we had enough fuel to get her up there, that could be an option. I'm talking to my friends, and we... We've kind of thrown a, some some ideas around um, the like a mattress in a van, uh, any kind of a thing. But for the last twelve years, I've only ever ridden in a bariatric ambulance. I don't fit into cars. I'm four and a half feet from hip to hip as I sit, and it just crushes. Could you rent like an elephant to ride down the road? I'm just saying. I'm thinking of options. We're brainstorming here. But she could definitely get in the back of a truck if you put it down and you just laid her in there. The other people do that. Because my legs, my weight here crushes my legs and it just, it's hard. Well, so right now to travel without medical care is not an option for you. But we are still facing the issue that there is no available bariatric ambulance to pick you up and bring you to Houston. So here's the plan you need to follow. You ready for it? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, you're going to have to do everything you can to change your eating habit to lose some weight. So I'm going to send you a 1200 calorie diet again. Okay? And try. Yeah, good luck. This lady just ate like three things of watermelon. Like, I know she could do it, but I'm convinced that her stomach's so stretched out at this point, she's never going to feel full. It's got, like, she would probably have the biggest stomach the way she eats. It's like a freaking competitive eater. To follow that, which means no snacking, you only eat three times. You eat only about 400 calories per meal. You can have the cooked vegetable and salad. And four to six ounces of meat with that. And if you do that, you should have no problem losing 250 pounds over the next two months. Isn't that crazy to say? She's going to lose a full-grown man in two months? But at her size, that's so possible. Like he usually tells the other people 50 pounds, but she could drop 100 a month. Easy. It's important you do that. Because if you don't lose any weight, your health is not going to improve, and then you're going to get bedridden, and that's going to be really a dangerous situation with the weight you are in. you understand that? Yeah. Okay, then... You think you can follow a 1200 calorie diet we send you? Yeah, I'll do anything. But I'm real scared. <laughs> I'm real scared. I'm, I'm just scared in general, to be honest, about everything. I'm nervous, anxious, scared, and, and I don't really... Like, I don't see a land. But I'm seeing all kinds of issues here, because she, like, equates her self-worth to what these guys think when she's eating more and more food. And she's, I've only heard her put herself down this whole time. So her self-worth is just, like, bottom of the bottom. I wish, like, I could just rub some confidence off from me to her, but it don't seem like she's got it. Well, we can help you with that, but you have to take the first step. And start making the changes you need before it's too late. Because at this point, I don't think you're safe to travel. Yeah, unless you lose uh, at least 250 pounds, okay? Okay. And get to the point that you're going to be able to tolerate the trip. Okay. So if you don't lose any weight... There won't be much we can do for you. You got that? Yeah. And do you feel like you're motivated to make all the changes you need? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just... I'm 36 and I've gotten to this point. It's terrifying. Like, I, I'm just really scared. <laughs> she 
she should be motivated for her daughter. Like, there's so much to look forward to. You're only 36. I just turned 34. For me, my break point was hitting 30. And I was like, damn, I really thought I'd be dead by this point. But I guess I got to make a change now. I like I'm overwhelmed right now. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of things. Food is my entire life. I don't know what I am without food. Damn. I'm sorry. You're a lot lighter. That's what you are. No need to apologize. This is an easy process. And it's always key to take the first steps to change like this. But remember, as important as food is to you, your life is more important than food. And if you don't make these changes now, then you're gonna kill yourself with the food. You get that? <sighs> yep, for sure. Yeah, and that's a long, painful death too, because it's not like you're just doing something to end it right then. She would suffer for probably like five more years before her body finally gave all the way out. And could you imagine the amount of pain and suffering she could endure in five years at that weight? So lose 10 to 30 pounds over the next two months. This is going to be very easy if you stick with the 1,200 calorie diet, okay? Okay. So uh, and make sure you get up and walk every day because you can't allow yourself to become completely immobile. Okay, I will. I want you to get to where you can walk every day without your walker and stick to the 1,200 calories a day diet and we send it to you. Okay, I'm certainly gonna try for sure. Okay. You gotta get your health to the point that you're gonna be safe to travel to Houston. And that's gonna be something that we're gonna have to figure out once you get into 600s and health. I mean, I understand wanting her to walk without the walker, but who the hell's gonna pick her up if she falls? You're just begging somebody else to destroy their back at that point. I'm thinking not to leave the hospital. I know. Okay. Any questions? Nope. But I do have your number. I have your email, I think. All right. If you have any questions, give me a call. And I'll talk to you later. And stay focused. Right. Okay. All right. Well, nice talking to you. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be in touch. And if you have any questions, give me a call. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Bye. Bye. Sam is clearly still not taking her situation seriously, even though she says she wants help and that she's ready to make the changes she needs. But if that were true, she wouldn't be worse off now than she was a few- Yeah, but it's hard to buy all the way in. Like at first you think, okay, I'm just gonna get the surgery, they'll cut out my stomach, I'll be good, right? You don't see why you have to do all that work. And I know, because I did the same thing. But her is a little more urgent case than mine, so I would hope she wasn't ordering friggin' Chinese food from the hospital, but I guess she did. Two months ago, when she first reached out for help, but while we have been trying to find some transport options for her to try to get her here to help her, she put on more weight. So well, I'm obviously very concerned because being almost a thousand pounds and close to completely immobile is about as far as she can push her body. So it won't be long before it gives out. And at this point, I don't see how she's even going to survive past six months from now if she keeps going like this. But I'm Damn, six months? I gave her five years, but Dr. Now would know better than anybody. Unfortunately, the hospital she's at doesn't seem to have the setup and ability to put her on a control diet if Sam doesn't want that. So she's just eating constantly, and with a lack of activity, she's not burning anything off. But we'll see what can be done with the hospital and get a more PT option to intervene with her. But we have a very dire situation with Sam that doesn't have a good long-term outlook right now. I'm telling you, prescriber tender cardio. You saw what she did when she laid back. She damn near grabbed her ankles. She could go crazy on tender and lose probably 100 pounds in a week at her weight.
since my last talk with Dr. Now a couple weeks ago, I've been working really hard to make some good progress. My physical therapists come in here daily to help me get up and get around and do what I need. Hey, Sam. Hey. Ready to get up and move in? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! Yeah, okay. Yeah, I am. Right now, we're working on mobility. I still need my walker, but PT helps me, and I do just a little bit more each time. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> Okay, we're here. You good? Yeah. All right, bed up? Yeah, bed up. Okay. No. I know the routine. The first few days I was discouraged because I'm working so hard and I'm accomplishing so little. But I know... Bro, I'm still amazed at the fact that she can stand. The fact that she's even walking at her size is like mind-blowing. But it shows she hasn't totally given up, even if she has that defeatist attitude, so... I'm building up my ability to get around and my stamina. And I feel good about the progress I'm making with my mobility. But doing the food thing... That's the hard part. So I've only lost about 10 pounds over the last couple of weeks, which oh, I know shit. is nowhere near. You should have lost way more than that, baby. Where are you hiding those pizza boxes? Because she's got all kinds of hiding places right there. You know what? I think fat people would be the best smugglers. We could hide all kinds of stuff in our rolls. How much Dr. Now would say I should have lost in that time? But giving up food in any capacity is a big step. And I'm just glad I'm at least making some progress on my weight loss, where I'm going in the right direction. I am just thinking about food. A big positive thing is that I'm not struggling to breathe as much, so I'm feeling a little better. If I keep going, they told me that there's a chance that I'll be able to go back home soon. And I think... Bro, think about it. That gown's supposed to fit normal people, and it's not even covering an inch of her crack. That's wild. Don't they have, like, longer gowns for 900-pound people? Are they not accommodating us? That's such fat phobia. Being able to go home again will make things easier for me. Because at home, I have more to distract me from thinking about food. One. Two. <laughs> the f*** up! Okay. You got it. <sighs> <laughs> Oh my back! Oh my god! I have a long way to go to hit the goals Doctor Now gave me, and I'm more determined than I've ever been in my life to get better. Because I know whatever time I have left to do that isn't a lot. But seeing the progress I'm making, even in small doses, motivates me even more to keep going. Look, you always gotta take the small victories. At that size, you're not going to lose it all overnight. So absolutely doing something like that, that's a victory. She should be happy with herself about that. But there's a lot more work to be done, sis. You could have tried a little harder than that. So. So I'm giving it my all. You can do it. Because I still have another 240 pounds to lose in about six weeks to show Dr. Now that I'm serious. <laughs> Damn, buddy. Take a deep breath. In through your nose, out through your mouth, get really angry, and go. <laughs> you can do it. You know what? There's definitely some guy that watches this because it turns them on. I'm just thinking about that. Every time they show these angles, there's got to be just a group of guys that watch My 600 Pound Life because it's their fantasy to watch somebody eat to death. Look, my Juna face. Look. Yep, get that leg over a little bit more. There you go. He's straight. You got it. There you go. Great job. There you go. All right, my dear. I'll see you later, okay? Okay. This is so much harder than I thought it would be when I decided to do this. Because all I want to do is eat. And it feels like my body and my mind are just against me at times. I hate it. But at the same time, I'm just so motivated. <laughs> and I'm going to see Bella's college graduation. Bruh, I would think you want to walk and live more than you want them friggin' like pan-fried noodles, that carrot cake. 
but some people just can't break that cycle, that love of food. It's kind of scary. Well, it's, it's pretty now or never. After months right. in the hospital, I'm very glad to say that I'm finally discharged and I'm able to go back home with my weight down to around 900, which is a 40 pound loss. But you only lost 40 pounds in the hospital? I feel like I could have lost more than that. That food is so gross. I can't believe they let her order out. That's wild. But I'm also nervous because I'm not gonna have all that help like I did in the hospital. But I've made some really good progress over the last few weeks that I'm very proud of. <laughs> Why they bring these ladies? Ain't no shot you are helping her up them stairs. I mean, come on, you are 100% getting squished. You better be on the up end of them steps. I'm just saying. The gate. Yeah, right here. Right here. And I'm walking further now, so that's good. How's that feel on your side? Okay. We're good. If I was her, I'm probably there going, wee, just to mess with them. But that's just me. I started really trying harder and pushing myself. So I'm gaining a lot more momentum with my progress that I feel good about. All right, we're done. We're on the ground. Just to be safe, there. Bella and her boyfriend Ivan have said they're going to come stay with me for a few weeks just to make sure I'm doing OK on my own again and that I can handle this transition. I'm, like, okay. straddling it. Yeah. That's One, what she said. two. Up we go. Oh almost, almost. You're good. Now we know what you're doing here. All right, ready? Okay, so I'm gonna grab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're preparing to give her the ultimate wedgie. This is gonna be great. Let's watch. One, two, up we go. Okay. <laughs> right now, with even how far I've come, I still hit my limit too quickly if I'm up. And then I have to have help if I don't want to end up on the floor and in pain. Okay. Uh, sideways. Right. Okay. I, I got, yep, I got the pants. But we've made some big changes to make my life easier and to improve my living situation some. The biggest is that Bella helped me find a new apartment on the first floor. Oh, hell yeah. Second floor was dangerous for everyone involved. I don't know how she didn't come tumbling through there and land on top of somebody. If I was under her, I would have been mad. Because you have to hear her if she, when she does walk. Imagine what that sounds like upstairs. That would suck. And move my stuff into it. Because trying to make it up a flight of stairs was killing me. So that's a big help that's going to make getting in and getting out easier. I got that. Right. Yep. One, two, three. All right. We're good. Does this bed not go down anymore? No. Oh, Catch your breath. We made it, guys. Bruh, if she slides off that bed, that's going to be like crazy trying to get her up off the floor. She needs a low bed, but then it's like hard for her to get up. So she's kind of damned if she do, damned if she don't. Made it. Take care. It's a pleasure meeting you. You too. Thank you for your help. Uh huh. Want to show the door? Yeah. Do you like it here at all? Like, do you like this apartment? Yeah, I just, it's going to take some time to settle into. How am I going to do this? Ow! Oh, back! F me. Okay. Do Put the roll up. Ivan. There's no, there's... Yeah. There you go, there you go. Now I have to adjust with doing it all on my own again. I feel motivated to make it to my goal within the next month. I'm about a fifth of the way there, so I still have a lot to lose to do that. So whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. So hungry. Oh, Christ, lady, you better be calling Whole Foods. I I already know. This is going to be Chinese food. 
If they've got carrot cake on the menu, this chick's in. Look at how happy she is, too. She's smiling ear to ear. An order for delivery? Delivery, please. Do I have any order? I would like chicken strips, four orders of street corn, just house barbecue flavor ribs, mushroom Swiss burger, fries, strawberry lemonade, and then oh a molten God. chocolate lava cake. What are you guys gonna have? What are you gonna have? Are you kidding me? How much she get paid to eat that though? Cause I, I can do some stuff with a cupcake. I'm just saying. Depending on how much money's involved, but that's a lot of damn food, guys. And she just got on Dr. Dow's 1200 calorie diet. I don't think chocolate lava cake's on that damn thing. Slippery when wet. <laughs> Today I'm home after being in the hospital for a while, and I feel really good to have my freedom again. But to be honest, I'm real scared about being here because living alone at home freaks me out. I can't imagine it's going to work, but I have no choice. I've had Bella help me as much as I need her help for, and then when they leave, the rest is up to me. Oh my god, it's more friggin' food. What are you doing, lady? You're perfectly content with your life as it is? You don't want to change at all? You're just gonna keep ordering food till it kills you. The positive thing is that I'm able to order anything that I need or want or like. It, it's comforting to me. So, I've been following the diet but sometimes it's just like, why bother? If food makes me happy and I'm gonna die anyways, why don't I just make myself happy? Uh. Look at that, I'm right off the bone. It's really hard to watch my mom like this. It's so good, it makes me wanna cry. Is it actually really that good? It really is. I mean, your kid's watching you. You're sitting here just pounding this food. You don't have any care at all to the thought that, you know, this is something that's tough on her. She doesn't want to see her mother do this. Her food addiction must just be through the roof crazy, but... Breaks my heart seeing my mom just kind of lose mobility. I don't know how to describe my emotion today. I was excited for her to come home today, but I was also unsure because I feel like the best place for her right now is probably the hospital. I used to always ex like expect the worst and I was trying not to do that and be happy for her. But I know that she's definitely scared of being alone and I'm just scared that she's gonna have suicidal thoughts and be not okay on her own whenever we leave and that's they're just sitting there looking for a crumb. They're hungry as hell, and this lady is tearing this food up. Bro, feed them. Terrifying to me. She's been in the hospital for so long that you have people constantly checking up on you. But here, she's on her own. She has no one. At first, everything was fine, and then everything went south really fast. <clears throat> I just want to go back. <sighs> so Bruh, I can't believe this lady is sitting here with an inhaler and a rack of ribs. Like, yeah, I'm almost a thousand pounds, but I gotta order my ribs. Disappointed about the central air situation. <laughs> and it just progressively got worse. I'm so overwhelmed. I stop shoving through like that face. It's really hard to watch her spiral like that. I'm trying my best to keep like a positive mindset. And then whenever she's coming at you with so much negativity, how are you supposed to keep that positivity? What's gonna happen when you guys aren't here? What's I gonna mean, happen I get that. Me? Why did I come home? Why did they want me out of there so bad? This chick does never has a positive thought come through her head at all. 
She needs therapy just as much as she needs the weight loss surgery. The more you keep saying that, like, it's it's bad, it's bad, it's going wrong, it's going I bad. can't find a positive anywhere. <laughs> I can't land on a positive if there's one that exists. This is a good apartment. This is an amazing apartment. For a normal sized person. <laughs> the size of the Titanic. You need to find a positive. The, the more you continue to talk about the negative, the more you There's are... no positive, though. There is a positive. Where? You need to find it. Stop thinking negative, because then you're not going to find any sort of positive. Stop yelling at me. Then stop yelling at me. This chick's the one yelling. She just reminds me of, like, that big baby from Rugrats. Uh, she just sits, sits there and yells and screams and expects everyone to, like, cater to her. I wouldn't even be there if I was that girl. I'd be fed up with her negativity, honestly. People are helping you. People want good things for you. That is a positive. I want six million dollars. Is that f***ing to help anything? Yeah, and people would help us with ice water, Mom. That, see, we all want and it doesn't work. Well, it's already working, Mom. Look at where you're at. <laughs> Look at who is here for you. We could have let you do this Don't all on your own. Don't even try to start that I'm not thankful. I've thanked you all day. I know that you're thankful, but like you aren't acting like it. And you're being very negative, which puts me in a very negative mindset. Makes me not want to be around you, Mom. I mean, she doesn't say a single positive thing ever. She's just sitting there. Everything's all doom and gloom. I think I'd be pretty fed up for sure, too. Come on. 700 pounds, let's go. This past month has just been hard. Harder than I thought it would be. But I haven't let that stop me from working hard to make it to my weight loss and mobility goals. And I know I've made more progress this past month because I'm back to handling more on my own. I still need my walker if I get too tired. But I can walk some without it now, so I'm using it a lot less. Okay. It's just when I push myself too hard that I have to get it. And once I'm at that point, I have to have some help. That's a positive. You could take some, you know, pride in that at least. You, you're walking now. That's a good thing. Sabella so and Ivan are still staying with me. But I feel like What's I'm getting close to being able to completely take care of myself. And I feel good about how I'm doing. I'm just... What is that? Did she, like, squish a bar of soap and it's stuck to her back? I don't know what the hell that is. Hoping it'll be enough to show Doctor now. I'm good. Oh my god. I think that's that whale plushie from the start. She just squished it so much it's flat. What? That pink little plushie. Yeah, I'll put hold on your pants. I got it. I'm going to go sit in the bathroom and turn out to vomit real quick. Dr. Now, tell me he wanted me to do PT and start psych therapy this month. So I've done some stuff with PT. So I called them and I've been doing that one to two times a week. And I've just focused on my physical progress right now. Because I feel like I needed to give that my all. Since I've got such a... I think therapy is definitely the most important for this woman. Big goal to hit by this month. So that's what I've done. I'm hoping how I've pushed myself has paid off. I'm supposed to go to the hospital again next week to get my official weight checked. I'm still curious how she's affording anything because the honey bun humpers have surely ran away at this point. The snicker frickers ain't sending no more money because this woman ain't eating no more cakes, or is she? She's supposed to be on a diet. You think they would go for it if she ate a salad? I don't, they might, they might do something with the ranch dressing. They might like that. And I'm supposed to be down to the 600s from 940. 690. I guess if you go by Dr. Now's math, I'm losing 250 pounds. But I think I did that to make that weight. And if not, I'm at least close, because I feel like I've been starving myself, you know? Ivan! Are you guys interested in coffee? Yeah, coffee. Yeah? Yeah. I'll just have a salted caramel, whatever that thing is you get me. 
and then you can get whatever you want. Cool. Yeah. I guess we'll be back, all right? And you have all enough right. money on the card, right? Yep. Okay. Love you guys. Be safe. Love you. Bye. Bye. The ice cream man's money's running out. You heard that. She asked how much is left on the card. She ain't been able to film a mukbang anymore. I've been following Dr. Nell's diet for the most part. The only difference is I still give myself treats and little rewards here and there to help deal with things. Mm, God. And I still give myself cheat days once every week to help motivate me. Because I can push myself knowing that I'll have a reward waiting for me. Bro, I'm going to guess that thing is like 600 calories. That's half her daily diet right there. And that definitely ain't low carb. I just want to make food because I'm hungry. So that's how I kind of trick myself into eating less. Because my eating has been drastically less than it has been my entire adult life. To the point where it just feels insane to me at times because I don't feel like I've really been eating. So hopefully yeah, this is enough. That's good. I haven't really been eating while you're sitting there licking the caramel out of the bottom of that thing. I have to show Dr. Now what he wants so I can get transferred to Houston and ultimately have weight loss surgery. I don't think french fries are on your diet Because I know either. I can't keep doing this on my own. It's just too hard to control my eating and to keep cutting back like I have been. It's way too hard without something stopping me from eating and help me change my habits because I just can't do it on my own. Bro, the crazy thing is, is that's cutting back for her. If, like, a normal person ate that way, they'd gain weight. But she's going to lose 250 pounds eating like that. Isn't that nuts? So I desperately need to get weight loss surgery. Or I'm not going to be able to succeed at this and change my life the way I need. And I've worked really hard to be able to move towards getting it. And hopefully when I go to the hospital next week, it all goes as planned. So this time next month, I'll be in Houston preparing to get the surgery. And start with a new chance. She even painted her fingernails the color of the McDonald's bag, man. You know, this chick's got it bad. It's a better life. This happened to me too. My surgery got all effed up. I started three months before that broke out. So all my clearances were bad by the time I actually got cleared and was ready for surgery. I had to do them all again. It was ridiculous. Damn. Come on, 26 pounds, baby. You can do it. That's one of your carrot cakes away. Or maybe about 20, but you could do it. I would have went for it. Mm. Oh, they did it at that size? Holy shit, how'd they do it at almost a thousand pounds? And how'd she not stop breathing? She's lucky. They didn't want to touch me till I got below 550. This looks like she's seen a ghost. These past months have been a huge change for me because getting weight loss surgery saved my life. When the stay at home stuff started, I started to get scared I wasn't going to be able to get weight loss surgery. So I was very excited when I found out that I was going to get it here in Denver. So I got it a few months ago, and I've been here in the hospital the whole time because I- Damn, I can already tell. She's probably one of those people that is certainly going to suffer depression after the surgery because food was everything to her. It was everything. Like, she was getting off just thinking about french fries. So it's probably tough for her just sitting there because she looks like she's been friggin' traumatized. Twisted my knee coming back and couldn't be on my own again with how much I've gained. So I wasn't expecting to be in the hospital this long. Lucky so that's all it's you working. twisted. I'm exercising more. I'm losing weight. 
because I'm down to 638 as of this morning. Okay. That's the lowest I've been in like 15 years. That's what, 38, da, 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 about 330 down from that, seven to, uh, that, that 974 mark? But I am miserable and depressed right now, which I cannot figure out. Except Damn. for the fact that I don't know how to cope with my life and existence without food. People kept saying, it's not going to be as bad as you think. It's not going to be as bad. But it's even harder than I thought it was going to be. If food makes me happy, the happy me is gone. I just feel incredibly sad. Get a puppy. The man, the myth, the For legend. For the past few months, I have been working with a colleague of mine, Dr. Hidari in Denver, to treat Sam Mason. I have known him for many years, and he was willing and able to perform weight loss surgery in an effort to try and stop Sam from killing herself with food. With the restrictions from COVID, Sam was obviously not able to come to Houston. And yeah, I'm shocked they, because they never want to do that surgery. I think some liability falls on the doctor if they do it, and they don't think you're mentally ready for it. So I'm shocked they even wanted to. My concern was she wouldn't be able to survive for long because she almost made it to 2,000 pounds. And she said she hurt her knee coming back to the hospital, so she was completely bedridden on top of that. So in that state, with nothing to do but stay at home and eat, she would have died within months or sooner. And if we didn't do something drastic, she would likely not be alive right now. After surgery, we were also able to work out putting in place dietary restrictions for Sam in the hospital. So in addition to weight loss surgery, she has been on a controlled diet for the past few months. And thankfully, all that has been affected. Oh, that's why she looked traumatized. She ain't had Chinese food in a while. That's that Chinese-induced depression. Okay, I got it. ...to get her weight down. But the concern now is the next steps with her and making sure we can help her turn track so she doesn't end up gaining everything back and end up in the same situation again. Hi, Dr. Hey, Daddy. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Now. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. So how is everything going with the Samantha? Samantha is doing really well. We've been able to get a lot of weight off her the past few months. She's down to 640 pounds as of yesterday, and she's really motivated. She's doing PT and not fighting that at all. However, uh, the problem is the weight loss has really slowed down in the past couple of weeks. Well, it so she's got to be sneaking in food then. There's no way at over 600 pounds in a hospital you should be like not losing weight. You got to figure out where she stuffed the Funyuns because she's, she's having way more fun with them things than I ever did if I think they're hidden where, where I think they are. That is to be expected because Lolo is telling me that she's not taking psychotherapy as seriously as she should. Mm. Is she still uh, avoiding that? So yes, she's had some sessions, but she's still being somewhat resistant. Well, if she doesn't start dealing with the issues that drive her to overeat, it won't be too long before she'll undo her surgery and gain all her weight back. And I don't think her body can handle that again. I agree with you. You're right. So I'm planning to transfer to a rehab facility so we can have more time in a controlled setting so we can keep working with her. But yeah, but here's the problem. You put her in a controlled setting, and she's already proven that the second she gets home, all that's undone. This chick's ordering barbecue like five minutes in the door. So any work or any weight she loses, she's going to just undo right away. She really needs to like flip that switch in her head and realize like this is life or death. And you have a child. Sounds like a good idea. All right, I'll check back with you next week to see how she's doing. Uh, but at the meantime, if anything comes up, let me know. Or if you need anything, and give me a call. Sounds good. I sure will. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. 
Sam has a lot of issues that she's going to need to address to be able to get control of her eating in the long term. And so that means it's very important she takes psychotherapy very seriously before she's back on her own in her old environment where she can start to overeat again, especially with her weight loss going. Because at almost a thousand pounds, with weight loss surgery and controlled diet, it's very easy for her to lose a few hundred pounds quickly because she can't. Yeah, uh, she lost weight pretty quick. But the fact that it's slowed already is showing me that she's already probably started to stretch her stomach back out. Which is freaking insane because at her size, there's no way she shouldn't be just melting away. At least to about the 400 mark. Can't push herself to agree too much. But now around 600 pounds, it's going to start to get a little bit harder for her. And she's likely finding little ways to get some extra food here and there that is contributing to that slowdown. So it is a sign that she's starting to find ways to use food to cope again. Yep, we got Sam the Starburst Smuggler. I'm still thinking of all the places she could hide stuff, but if she just lifted up her stomach, man, there might be like a friggin' Willy Wonka's factory underneath that thing. You don't know. The psychotherapy is going to be an essential step for her. And we need to make some progress with her, with her emotional issues, before she goes back home. So she doesn't do all the progress she has made and end up back in the same situation again because she likely won't survive her body being pushed to that point again. Yeah, there's no way she could go there again. But I also think it would be hilarious if Dr. Now walked into her room and she tried to like hide the haagen real quick and they found the haagen hoo-ha. That would be awesome. I live for stuff like that. Rehab center. She looks like she just. Hi, Samantha. Life. Hello. Dr. Hideri, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. Sam, this is really exciting. You get to get out of the hospital finally. Finally. You've done really well. You know, I'm so proud of you. Okay? Thank you. You know, this was major surgery, it was a big risk. We took a risk operating on you. However, I appreciate your confidence in us and me to have surgery. I mean, I'm proud of her too. Like, I'm joking around, but over 300 pounds is impressive, even if she didn't have to do anything beforehand and it was just emergency surgery. But I still think that she's not taking it quite as serious as she should. As she should, yep. Nobody would ever, ever take a chance on me. I was oh. always told I was too big. Oh, no. So thank you for looking at me and saying, you okay, work. maybe she can do it. Because I did it, and here we are. Look of at course. That. Of course, you've done so well. You've had no problems with surgery, and after surgery, you've been so dedicated. But moving forward, you're going to rehab, okay? Mm -hmm. Very important to work as hard as you can in rehab mm -hmm. with physical therapy, also with behavioral specialists. That becomes a big part of this process, not just about surgery, okay? Right. You know, people will under, never understand what it feels like to be trapped in your own body, because uh, you'll complain, like, I don't want to go to the store. But then think about it if you couldn't go to the store. And just walking through the store was something that, like, you hadn't done in, like, five years. I was just about there. Like, I could go in the store, but I was going to be dead tired when I got out. But just imagine not being able to do the things that you hate today. But you would, if you couldn't do them, it would be a big struggle. You know what I mean? It's about everything after surgery. Mm. You've lost a lot of weight already. But in order to continue and not to regain... Mm -hmm. You have to really work with physical therapy and behavioral specialist, mm -hmm. okay? I'm progressing past the, the walker. Good. I don't really even need it anymore. I see that. It's I see great. you're very active. You really have been committed to this. You've been excited. You worked hard. So continue, okay? Okay. Sounds All great. Right. Okay. Good job. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you're you. welcome. So we're going to do a weigh-in. Before you go? Weigh-in okay, before I go. Okay, we're going to weigh-in. Let me see. This is the best way. Wow, she looks so much friggin' smaller, though. It's kind of crazy, because she's lost a third of her weight. Even if it was emergency surgery, I mean, she looks a lot better than she did. She just looks like she's dead inside, because I guess food was the only thing she lived for. Oh, okay. 
it says 280.2. So this is in kilogram. I'm just gonna do a quick, quick calculation. Oh my God, look, 616 no. pounds. Good job. Yay. Wow. From 950, awesome. 970. 970, yeah. Wow. 970. This is really good. So proud of you. But you're not done, okay? Not done. You are not done. You're gonna get below 500. Okay, so she's lost like 360 pounds. And from a recent video I watched, I learned that's about two kangaroos. Maybe three kangaroos. I like the way they broke weight down to kangaroos. I'm trying to do that from now on. 500. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Great job. I will check on you with rehab. And we'll see you in about a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Today, Samantha is being discharged to rehab after being in the hospital for a while. Can we get off on that side of the side or this side? Everybody's peering. I'm not a orangutan, guys. Just a really large human. What? Who called you yeah, an orangutan? Yeah, I'll come up the side. <sighs> We're only going to be able to keep Sam in rehab for about a month, maybe a little bit longer. But now that Sam has completed the physical stress of surgery and has come through the surgery so... Bro, I can already see the loose skin on her back. She's doing great. She just needs to keep working at it and not let herself slip up. I'm afraid for her when she leaves here because she doesn't seem like she has the drive she needs. But I don't know. He, the, the doctor's saying she has it, so... Well, it's important for her to get serious about the emotional aspect of this problem and her issues. Look she's going to rehab to work with physical therapy and also work with behavioral specialists, with psychotherapy to really help her continue with weight loss. She needs those as support now that she's done so well with surgery. The first few months, the weight loss is rapid, so it's quite That's exciting. Crazy. The challenge is going to be the fact that the weight loss is going to slow down. And because she's kind of shaped like a Hershey kiss, I just realized that of that slowdown, she may get down a little bit, she may get depressed, and she may kind of want to go revert back to old habits. So it's very important for now for her to have support with behavioral specialists and physical therapy. Even though we can get her the physical therapy help at home, but it would help a lot for her to be in a center, in a controlled environment, so we can help her with physical therapy and also with psychotherapy to help her with a lot of emotional issues that she may be going through right now. In addition, it will minimize her exposure to COVID because of her recent surgery. Oh yeah, they're sent into a rehab facility. Those places were packed with that. But she gets to go on another roller coaster. I'm really jealous about that. I never got to do any of that fun stuff. She's immunocompromised and because of her weight issues, the last thing she wants to get is COVID. She will not do well with that. So the next month will be very important with regard to the choices that she's going to make before she goes home. Once she goes home, she will not have all these restrictions and all this help. And if she makes the right choices, she will be successful with continued weight loss and weight maintenance. But if she doesn't deal with her emotional issues, her weight loss will come to a stop and more Yeah, I mean, she could very easily put all that weight back on if she just doesn't take it serious and keep up with the program. You saw at the beginning, they say it's 5%. I would think it's more than that, but this chick's definitely at risk if she doesn't follow through with therapy and all that stuff. Importantly, she may gain weight and she may fail. Today, I'm headed to a rehab facility to work on my muscle strength and getting more stamina so I can be more active. I'd rather be going home, but I know this is the best option for me right now to keep me moving in the right direction. So I'm excited to be taking another step towards a better life and at least get a change in environment. I'm telling y'all, bedroom bodybuilding, that is the best option for her. If we could find her the Tinder Swindler or something, she might be able to get a little bit of action. We all.
I'm still very determined to keep doing what it takes to get to my goal no matter how hard it is because I want to make it and I want to do it for Bella. You're going to be half, you're ha going to have to be determined to come back from almost a thousand pounds. But she could do it as, as long as she gets over that dependency thing in her head where she thinks food just is what gives her life value. It's kind of a weird thing to say, but that's absolutely how she's talking. Hi, Dr. Now, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. How about you? I think this is the only episode where Dr. Now never saw the person, like, in person. They never got to make the trip to Dr. Now's BBW car dealership. I swear it looks like a car dealership. So? Good. Busy, but good. Well, that's, uh, that's our job to be busy. So, I'm calling to see how Sam Mason doing. Well, she has had a little bit of setback. Unfortunately, you know, she was doing well and then she was transferred to a rehab center. Uh, some of her excess skin in the lower abdomen and upper leg, unfortunately, got infected. As you know, she has cellulitis and we got some... She's never going to be able to reach all those spots to get clean. But as a big person, like, you're going to get those rashes and infections. It's hard to stay clean, especially at her size and her shape. I can't imagine how she gets under her stomach to clean. Some of the skin, the rounds had to remove to help address that. Then she has some wound problems, so she's dealing with wound care right now. This is going to be a long process. It's going to take a while for the wound to heal. Right, I think a minimum, minimum two more months before they heal. But the infection is under control. It's just the wound we need to address. Oh, that's good. But uh, hopefully that will be healing in the next couple of months and maybe she'll be able to keep making more progress. Yes, I mean, she's yeah. a lot happier, that's for sure, than before. You know, she's quite motivated. She's trying to do her best, and I'm optimistic. That's hard. Can you take somebody that's already a negative person and put more setbacks on top of them? I don't think she's probably handling that all that well, but... I think she'll keep doing that. That's great. So, is Sam still cooperating with psychotherapy? She is on and off. Okay. But that's the positive to her situation, is that it gives us longer with her, to work with her on that, and help her deal with the issues she needs before she goes back home. She's quite motivated. She's trying to do her best, and she's in a controlled setting, so perhaps we can do better with psychotherapy with her and physical therapy, whatever we can do. Good. So what is Sam's weight now? She is losing, but she has come to a standstill in the past couple of weeks. She has not lost as much as I expected in the last couple of weeks. Damn, how do you get to a standstill at 600 pounds? Like, I get there's plateaus. I recently had one, but this morning I'm 309. So that puts me 296 pounds down. So I kind of had a standstill at 311, but that was my first one since surgery. So. So what do you think her weight is now? So she's just under 500 pounds, around 496 uh, okay. pounds, which means that she's already lost about 500 pounds. So we just need to keep it going so she can continue losing. Good. That's what I'm saying. That's why I wish I would have let mine get a little higher. I want my numbers to be crazy like that. This lady went from pounding carrot cake to like the quarter ton woman. That's impressive. That's good. We just need to keep her going to get her to go to 200, huh? Absolutely. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. And that's going to be the goal for her. Okay. Let me know if you need anything, okay? Okay, I sure will. And thank you for the hard work you've been doing with this patient, okay? Appreciate okay. it. Sounds good, Dr. Now. Thank you very much for your support and everything you do. Well, that's my job. All right. Bye, bye Bye now.
the wound issue Sam developed sounds like an unfortunate setback. But Dr. Hideri is right. The only positive with that is having more time with her in a controlled environment to work on the core issues behind her pathological eating. I mean, everybody has setbacks. What defines you is like how many times you get back up. You can get knocked down a million times. Trust me, I've made a million mistakes in my life. But all I can do is worry about doing better moving forward, and that's what I'm trying to do. Or she goes back into an environment where it's going to be harder for her because of the temptations around her. So far, all her weight loss has been in a controlled environment. So it's very important she deals with what she needs and gets to where she's coping with things in a healthier way. Because if she doesn't do that, then it is likely she will end up getting all her weight back in the long run. So we still have a long road ahead with Sam Mason, but losing almost 500 pounds is certainly a good start. There's a good chance she wouldn't be alive today if that had a how's she making money now if she was only eating while guys friggin like got off what is she is there a weight loss kink is there somebody that's in the loose skin because she could get into that i'm just trying to think of business opportunities here does she got big feet that might be something can happen but now the focus is on keeping her going in the right direction and that's likely not gonna be easy and could take us up to another year of working with her to get her to where she needs to be so she's still far from being out of the woods with her health and overall situation but she's been given all the tools and support she needs to do this so it will all come down to the choices she makes from here but I'm hopeful that she will do the right thing and stay on the right path. Okay. Get to see one more thing from her. Hopefully she's got a little closer, a little lower, to, closer to her goal. After my most recent surgery, the wounds refused to heal. And so I was sent to a rehab facility, and this is where I'm at right now. It's a small setback, but by this time next year, I will have my life back. I worked way too hard to be... Okay, so that's the message behind it. Keep working hard, but I guess you got more. At this point in my life right now, to give up. And I will not be giving up. My spirits are up, and um, I'll have my cats and my, my kid, and everything will be in my life that I want to be in my life next year. These wounds are not it. <laughs> they will not be in my life. Um, I can't see me stopping at this point. This will have all been for nothing if I stop now, so. Just a small setback. Okay, so really, it's just a lesson in perseverance. Not giving up, thinking positively. She beat herself up a lot, and I don't think I heard a positive thing from her until that moment. Maybe she realized that everything she was saying sounded super negative. But I'm just worried about her career choice. I don't know what she's going to do from here. The honey bun humpers are out the door, man. If you're not close to a thousand pounds, they ain't going to keep shelling out all this money to watch you go to the, your, like, deathbed. But I don't know, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later. Peace.